Welcome to the Gospel Attic Podcast. I'm Greg Bryan. And I'm Jim Resty. We're gospel addicts because we believe the gospel of Jesus isn't just good news, it's the best news ever. We're addicted to the gospel because it doesn't just start us out in the Christian life, it is the Christian life. Join us as we look at the Bible through the lens of the gospel. Thanks so much for listening. And I love that Charlie Brown special. I think it's, 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 it's wonderful. It's a tradition for a lot of Americans to watch that every, every year around Christmas time. But what is the true meaning of Christmas? Christmas is one of the most popular holidays around the world. I mean, it is celebrated around the world in just about every country. But what is it about? You know, if I was in your country and I was at a program like this, around a major holiday, I would, I would be interested in finding out what the history of and what is the, the deeper meaning to that holiday. So I just want to let you guys know that's what we're doing tonight, is just kind of explaining the, the deeper meaning of Christmas. What's the big deal about Christmas? Well, understanding the meaning of Christmas is key to understanding the meaning, of the core meaning of the Christian faith. At the core of the Christian faith, is love and relationships and that's has a that's a lot of what christmas is all about you see when we believe we believe that christianity is not just another religion we don't even like to think of it as a religion we like to think of it as a relationship a relationship with god and helping repair our relationships with others it's unique and if it's true which i believe 100 percent it's true It's the best news ever. We believe it's the ultimate cosmic love story. And let me explain it to you this way. Does anyone here like pets? Well, I can tell you one thing, and you probably have learned this. Americans love pets. And when I grew up, I grew up with all kinds of different pets. I had pet turtles. I had pet fish. I had a dog. um, I had frogs. I had gerbils. But I also had parakeets. Uh, anybody seen a parakeet? See the picture behind me? I had a pet parakeet. I just want to tell you the story of that pet parakeet. When I was 14 years old, I was going through a, a really tough time. My parents were going, getting divorced, and I was really struggling. During this time, my uncle took me to a pet store, and he bought me a parakeet. And I named that parakeet Rocky. And I spent a lot of time as a young man with that parakeet. In fact, I I taught him how to whistle. I taught him to say words. He could say his name. Um, I taught him how to fly to my finger. I'd open the door of his cage and he'd fly to my finger. I'd put him on my shoulder. I'd take him all around my house. I taught him how to drink from the the sink. Um, All kinds of stuff. Uh, Everything was great in Rocky's life. But then one day, things changed. I took Rocky into our family room and he was flying around and he flew somewhere he'd never gone before. He flew up to this built-in shelf uh, against the wall of our family room. And he was walking around on that shelf and when he walked to the end of the shelf, he fell down a shaft, a very narrow shaft that went all the way to the ground. And he just started squawking and flapping, he couldn't get out of there, he was stuck. Um, And as you can imagine, when something like that happens, you you panic, you're like, what do you, what, he uh, he couldn't fly out of there, he couldn't climb out of there. It was just very, very narrow shaft. But he couldn't save himself. And at first I didn't know what to do, but then I came up with an idea. I went to his cage and I got his little swing, and I tied a string on it, and I, I, I lowered that string all the way down the bottom of the, the, you know, where he was trapped, and eventually he grabbed onto it, and I pulled him up, and he was like hanging upside down. <laughs> if you can picture a bird, like, you know, he was hanging out for dear life, I, I pulled him out, I rescued him. I rescued him. Um, now, why do I share that story? Well, because it illustrates one of the most important things that we believe about Christmas. 
You see, the Bible says that there was a time when the world was the way that God created it to be. People were in perfect communion with God. They were in perfect communion with each other. Nobody lied. Nobody cheated. Nobody hated another person. There was no disease. There was no sickness, even death. Life was good. You could say that life was perfect. But then we, as humans, we turned away from God. We disobeyed him. We rebelled against him. And then the world became what it is like today. The world became a place full of pain, full of suffering, sickness, and death. A a broken world full of lying and cheating and hatred where people put themselves before they put other people. I don't think you have to, I don't think anybody here would argue with me that this world is broken. That as you look around the world, you see brokenness everywhere you go. And if you look inside your own soul, you would say that your soul is broken as well. Um, See, we were made to know and love God. This is what Christians believe. And our souls are broken. But we replaced our love for God for our love for things, for stuff. And we created things uh, that will never satisfy us. We, we, we worship things that won't satisfy us. So then we create religions. And we try to climb our way back to God. And so these, these ladders on the screen and then this ladder here, to me, represents what religion represents. Religion is our attempts to try to get to God. And there's all kinds of religions around the world. There's not just a few. There's hundreds. There's thousands. Religion is our way of trying to to fix that brokenness to get back to God. But what if it's impossible? What if there's no ladder that's tall enough? What if if, uh, we can't save ourselves? Just like my, my pet bird couldn't save himself. He needed outside help. Well, that's where Christmas comes in, because Christmas makes a radical claim that God came down to us. God came down to us. He loved us so much that he came down to rescue us like I rescued my pet bird. Well, why? Why would God do that? Well, he came down because we couldn't save ourselves, that he had to intervene. Only he could save us. And we believe that, and this is the message of Christmas, that he did. He did, in fact, come and save us. The clip that was shared from that Charlie Brown Christmas special, there was some verses from the, the Gospel of Luke, where it says, there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. And, and, you know, I just want you to know, if God were to come down right now and show up in this room, we would all be terrified. Because God is way greater than any human being. We would all be on our faces. Um, they were afraid. But then they, these were angels that they were afraid of. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby lying in a manger. You see, the Bible teaches that we need a Savior. We can't save ourselves. No religion or ladder is tall enough to get us to God. And friends, the real meaning of Christmas is that God loved us so much that He came down to us to rescue us, to redeem us, to restore that relationship with Him. Remember I talked about how the world was perfect at one point? God wants it to be perfect again. But we can't make it perfect. Only he can. He does it by coming down to us and rescuing us. So it's no wonder that this is one of the most popular holidays across the world. Christmas is all about gifts. I mean, you guys know that there's gifts on your tables. It's all about giving gifts. But if you're a follower of Jesus, you recognize that the greatest gift that was ever given was the gift that God gave us. The gift of life, the gift of His Son, Jesus, who entered our world the same way you and I did. 
And yet as he grew, Jesus lived a perfect life, a life without sin. But then he chose to die on a cross in our place as our substitute to pay for our sins so that we could have a relationship with him. See, Jesus lived a life that you and I were meant to live, a perfect life. But he died the death that we deserve to die in our place as our substitute so that we might become whole inside. One third of the known world celebrates Christmas. There are people who believe what I just shared with you in every nation of the world. I want to leave you with this thought. What if Christmas is true? What if, what if it's true that God did come down to rescue you? Thanks for listening to this episode of the Gospel Addict Podcast. Feel free to contact us via email at gospeladdictpodcast at gmail.com. Stay tuned for our next episode. And remember, on your worst days, you're never beyond the reach of God's grace. And on your best days, you're never beyond the need of God's grace. See you next time.